Hey guys, I'm here today to talk about plantar fasciitis. So the other day I had a family friend come to me complaining of some foot pain right around this area, around the bottom of the heel, uh, telling me that it felt worse in the morning and it felt worse when she spent more time sitting. It would kind of stiffen up, right? So that is your classic plantar fasciitis symptoms. And this is a really common injury people have, so I thought I would make a video addressing it. So what causes plantar fasciitis? Essentially, it's an overuse or overstress of the connective tissue layer on the bottom of your foot. This can be caused by poor footwear, poor mechanics, posture, and depending on the type of foot that you have. So the human foot is a biomechanical masterpiece, and it's amazing at absorbing force from the ground, so adapting to the ground, and then becoming really rigid and propelling us forward as we walk. So you need an ideal balance between mobile to be able to adapt to the ground and rigid to be able to push us forward. So if you're someone that's extremely flat footed or has a very flat arch on this side, you are really good at adapting to the ground. Your foot is very mobile, but probably not so great at propelling you forward and becoming rigid. This kind of foot type leads to plantar fasciitis. Also, if you're someone with a really high arch like this, your foot is really good at becoming rigid and propelling you forward, but it's not so great at adapting to the ground. That can also cause plantar fasciitis. So that begs the question, how can we work to decrease your symptoms and get you out of pain? So the first I would say is some kind of mobilization. So if you have a really flat foot, your plantar fasciitis is likely very overworked because it's doing all the work of your calf. Your calf muscles and the muscles up your leg should be propelling you forward, not just relying on that fascia on the bottom of your foot. So what that means is your calf is probably dehydrated, underworked, so we want to get some blood flow and some healing back into that area and we can do that with a tennis ball or a golf ball. This can be as simple as while you're watching TV, taking the tennis ball, putting it under one side of your calf, kind of letting it sit until you find a spot that's really tight. We call this like a trigger point. And then sort of just sitting on it until it doesn't feel as tight anymore. And then moving to another spot and doing the same thing. You can spend five, 10, 15 minutes doing this. You can be watching TV. You can be hanging out with your kids. But again, this is mobilizing those tissues that have been dehydrated and underworked and sending new blood flow and getting them reawoken. Now, if you have a really high arch, it might be more beneficial for you to do that same kind of mobilization to the bottom of your foot. So you can do, you can do the same thing, ideally with a golf ball because it's a little bit smaller, but you'll sort of pick a spot on the bottom of your foot that feels really tight sit on that for a couple seconds. Then once it doesn't feel as tight anymore, move it to another spot on your foot and continue for again, five, 10, 15 minutes. Another great way to mobilize your calves and the fascia on the bottom of your foot is rocking. So this is a full body movement. You're gonna be in this position, all fours, with your toes up back here like this, and you're just rocking back and forth, right? So it's really simple. It's an innate movement that we all have but it's really, really great to get that fascia on the bottom of your foot hydrated again. Same thing with your calves. So the next thing you can try is gonna be a little more of a lifestyle modification. So I call it mindful walking or mindful standing. So obviously doing exercises like those mobilizations and the rocking can be really helpful, but it's not changing the way you move through the world. And that's what we spend most of our time doing rather than just, you know, those exercises once or twice a day, we stand and we walk all the time. So it's important to really tackle those as well. So what does mindful walking look like? Well, a lot of us spend a lot of time with our hips rotated outwards, kind of this duck feet posture, and we walk like this, which collapses our arches and stops us from moving forward efficiently. So some things you can think about while you're walking or while you're standing is staying more towards the outside edge of your foot to kind of build up that arch and keep it nice and strong as well as spending more time towards the front of your foot, so more towards the ball of your foot because we are forward locomotive movers, right? We move forward, so if we're spending all of our time in our heels like this, 
that kind of sets off our whole posture and puts the brakes on our movement. So we wanna be keeping those feet straight, outside edge of your foot, on the balls of our feet while we're walking or while we're standing. Two other big lifestyle modifications are gonna be one, spending more time barefoot, because as humans, we're meant to be barefoot. We're not really meant to wear shoes. So spending more time out in the grass barefoot, walking around wherever you can. But obviously we do have to wear shoes for certain things like work, for certain activities we do, for certain sports. So for that, we have to make sure that we're wearing footwear that are shaped like a foot, have a nice wide toe box, are thin and flexible on the bottom, and can bend, twist, and rotate just like your foot does. And I have a couple other videos on my YouTube talking about footwear choices and which ones might be beneficial for you and your lifestyle. Thanks for watching. Head over to type1onthemove.com for more holistic health, diabetes education, and movement-related content.